Hey, welcome to Nuclear Craft Tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to build this fusion reactor. So let's get started. You're going to need all of these materials to build the size 6 fusion reactor. You need 3 electrolyzers, configurator, 20 fusion connectors, the fusion core, 3 stacks of transparent fusion electromagnets, uh, a stack of electromagnets, and you're also going to need stuff for our basic induction cell. That's how I power this reactor. Uh, a couple of stacks of flux ducts and 14 electric pumps. Also, you're going to need energy upgrades and speed upgrades for all of these pumps, along with filter upgrades and some mechanical pipes. Okay, so first I'm going to grab the connector, fusion core, and the electromagnets, along with some of the flux ducts. So just find a nice, decent, large size area for your fusion reactor, somewhere flat. Uh, these fusion reactors don't usually explode if you do everything correctly, so not too dangerous. You can put it in the middle of your base if you want to. Uh, so place the fusion core. Then go out five with each fusion connector. That's four, and that's five. So for a size six fusion reactor, you're gonna have five connectors. Okay, so do that on each side. Then we're gonna start with the electromagnets. First, the transparent ones, you gotta make a ring around. Okay. Do that all the way around. Basically, we're building a big square with the fusion core in the middle. Next, you want to put the electromagnets. We're going to follow this with another ring of electromagnets on the outside, like this. Then you're going to want one electromagnetic ring on the top. Okay, that's done. So your fusion reactor is built but you're gonna to need to power each of the electromagnets. Uh, all of them need to be powered. So I think the best way usually to do this is to place flux ducts on the inside, and then also on the outside. I do a ring, kind of like this. There are other ways to power this. You can have like flux ducts like every like eighth block or something, but. This is the way I like to do it. Pretty simple, easy to set up. You're also gonna want one on the outside. So right here usually works. I would make sure to connect these two just to save yourself time later. And also make sure to the power of the center because the reactor needs to be powered in the center and on the rings for it to work. Okay. 
And when you're using flux ducts, I would use at least resonant. The reactor needs a lot of power, so you want to have a lot of transfer rate. If you don't, then it probably won't work. Okay, now that's done. So I would next set up, I'm going to set up the, the pump for the fuel. For this reactor, I'm going to be using heavy water to make uh, deuterium fuel. Okay, so you're going to want to set up an area for the pumps. Each pump's going to need like some water behind it or in front of it. And it also gets power from behind, so. It's 13, so we need, we need about 14 pumps for this fusion reactor. You also want to grab some flux ducts. Then also break the block in front of it to put some water. Actually, before you do this, you want to put the filter upgrades in the, the pipes. Else it's going to fill with uh, water. We want heavy water, so filter upgrade. And you can go ahead and add the energy upgrades and the speed upgrades. Each pump needs eight energy upgrades and eight speed upgrades for it to be fast enough for the fusion reactor. Speed this up, I'm probably gonna copy how we paste this pump, but you're going to fill each one with energy and speed upgrades. Yes. Like this. Then you're going to grab some water. It's not pumping right now because there's no power, but we'll do power later. Okay. So next you want to grab the configurator and your mechanical pipes. And it pumps from the top. So put the pipe on the top. That set up. Next, you want to grab your electrolyzers. Uh, I have three here, but you actually need five. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to want power for each one of these two. So. Just run it back through here. I feel like powering it underneath is the easiest. Yeah. And for each one of these electrolyzers, you're going to want to configure it. So go to side configuration. And for the bottom two outputs, you want to make sure it's not being outputted. And you want to make sure it's being voided. I do void all to make sure that there's no fluid going into the pipes. And you're gonna want to do that for every single one of the electrolyzers. Okay, that's done. So now you want to connect each one to each electrolyzer. Now we're gonna do the power. 
So for the part, I recommend doing an uh, induction cell because the fusion reactor takes a large startup amount of energy and each one of these, these pumps take a large amount of energy too. I already have one set up over here that's like fully charged, but I'm going to show you how to set it up. So one induction casing, the port, nine induction cells, and nine induction providers. And we're just going to make a five by five by four induction cell. Induction providers on the bottom, and then the induction cells on the top. And you're going to want to put a port either the front, back, side, doesn't matter. Just make sure it's in the middle and not on the bottom or the edges. You just want to surround the cells and induction casing. And if you do it right, you'll see the redstone particles is formed, and this can hold about 3.6 giga RF. The reactor is probably going to use about like two, two and a half giga RF, but having an extra buffer just helps, just in case something goes wrong. Okay. So you're going to want to fill one up, either while well, using just some power gen, maybe some solar panels, some gas burning generators, something. Fill this up and then move on to the next step. Okay, so assuming you have one full, you don't want to power your, <laughs> your pumping setup. Just run a cable from the induction cell. You can also want to get a configurator. Make sure that your induction cell is on output. Yep, see now it's on output. And these should be gaining power and producing deuterium on the top. And you should see nothing on the bottom. That means everything's being voided correctly and that the heavy water is being turned into de deuterium fuel. Yeah. With that set up, we want to pump the deuterium fuel into the reactor. So. This is important to do before you power the reactor because it needs fuel to run. So I just run it to the, it has to connect to the, what's called, main fusion core. Yep, over here. Then make sure that each one is on extract, the pool, the deuterium fuel from each one of these. Yep. This should be full. Yep, it's full of the charm. With that setup, you're gonna you wanna make sure there's a, a decent buffer of deuterium, just in case. Like, this should be more than enough production, but you wanna have a buffer just in case like something goes wrong. In most cases, this reactor doesn't work because there's not enough fuel or not enough energy being transferred to the reactor. So with that set up, we're ready to turn on the reactor and get it started. So you're going to want to run power here. And you're going to see that each of the electromagnets are going to get powered and turn green. That means it's working. And you're going to see that this the energy is going to start to go up. And the temperature is going to start to go up too. That means it's working. So I'm going to cut and I'm going to come back when it's at 8,000 temperature. Okay, the reactor is almost at 8,000 temperature. So what we're going to want is a lever to start the initial reaction. You only need a lever to turn it on, start the initial reaction, and then it should work fine. So I'm just going to turn this on. And we should see that it starts. Yep, see? It started. 
Temperature's going up 49,000. That's pretty standard. But you're also gonna wanna avoid the output. If you're not pumping out these, these uh, produced uh, fuels, you're gonna wanna avoid output. So click on this. That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna let that heat up. Okay, I'm here in a different world because these reactors take a long, long time to fully power up. So just to show you how the cooling works. So if you see here, I have, I need to break this glass, yeah. I have dense helium collectors. You don't need dense helium collectors, you can just use helium collectors, but I just went all out and made these. Uh, you're gonna want those, then go down here. Want those to go into some super coolers, you want three of them. And then these need power, of course. And you're gonna wanna pump out the liquid helium that the super coolers make into two active fluid cooling, which I, two gives you about 88%. Uh, let's see, yeah, 88% active cooling rate, which you can see in this menu here. Then I, I also added uh, active fluid coolers with water sources on top. That added about one <laughs> percent, so it's at eighty-nine percent active cooling. But you see, my temperature change is very low, so this reactor is technically still going up in temperature, but eventually it's going to get to a point where it stops. So this reactor is stable. It's not going up forever. It's not going to explode or melt down. So this is basically the cooling you want. I think if you go over 100% cooling, then you get issues too. So you want to be between 100% and uh, like I would, I would say about like 80% is like good rate to make sure it's cooled. But also, 100% cooling is just 5,000 uh, Kelvin per tick. So, yep. It's been about like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna check on this reactor, see how it's doing. It's at 1%. You can see these things go up very slowly, but it's, it's, you see how it's at 45,000 power? That's almost enough to fuel this reactor. I think for a size six, you need about 56,000. And then you don't need any more external power. This thing will generate net power and you're good. If you look at the induction matrix, it's about yeah, about 1.6 giga RF. But if we come back over here to like this one that's been running for, I'd say about an hour and a half. It's at 72%. Generating 1.7 million RF. It's pretty impressive. And it's only at 72% efficiency. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and thumbs up would be appreciated. Yep.